students do you know how we can receive the information regarding our surroundings how is it that we are able to identify objects discriminate colors smell flowers hear sounds or taste sweets my name is sushma and today you and i are going to learn all the answers to these questions this is all possible because human body is equipped with special organs called the sense organs the sense organs perform the function for which it is designed sense organs don't have the capacity to understand the meaning of the sensory information sense organs only receive the information and transmit the same to the brain brain analyzes and interprets the impulses meaningfully so it can be stated that though we see with our eyes but in reality we see with our brain the coordinated activity of any organism depends on a continuous input of information from both the external and the internal environment each sense organ is made up of many cells but only a few cells in these sense organs actually receive the sensory information these cells are called receptor cells in a human body there are five important receptors and these are photoreceptors which respond to light chemo or gustatory receptors which respond to chemicals and taste respectively olfactory receptors which respond to smell auditory receptor which respond to sound tango receptors which respond to touch the organs in which these receptors are located are known as sense organs there are five important sense organs and these are i photoreceptor ear audit receptor nose olfactory receptor tongue chemo or gustatory receptor skin tango receptor let us examine the structure and function of each sense organ eyes are the most important sense organs with the help of eyes we are able to appreciate visually whatever is happening around us our eyes instantly adjust for seeing the objects which are near and far we also have binocular vision that is both the eyes see the same object at the same time eyes are located in cavities called orbits in front of the heads the accessory organs of the eye are eyelids eyelashes lacrimal glands eyebrows and conjunctiva eyelids protect the eye from dust and bright light regular blinking and involuntary action keeps the eyeball always moist by spreading a lubricating substance each eye has curved row of short thick hair the eyelashes protect large objects from entering the eye The lacrimal glands produce tears. Tears are the lubricating substance. They also have antiseptic property as they contain the bactericidal enzyme lysozyme. Tears constantly flow out of the eye through a small hole on the inner side of the eyelid. This hole is connected to the nose by a duct called the tear duct. and eyebrows protect the eye from dripping rainwater and sweat conjunctiva is a thin layer which covers the eyeball completely in the region of cornea the conjunctiva is thin and transparent 
the human eyeball is like a small marble or in spherical shape it has a diameter of about 2.3 centimeters the eyeball is divided into three layers the outermost layer is fibrous and is known as sclera sclera is a non elastic coat surrounding the eye completely except for the iris the posterior surface is pierced by the optic nerve the middle layer is choroid it is vascular choroid completely covers the eyeball except the pupil iris is a part of choroid the choroid has black pigment which prevents the light from scattering the inner layer is retina in which photoreceptor cells rods and cones are concentrated this is the sensory region of the eye which detects the light and transforms it into nerve impulses the eye has two chambers they are bigger vitreous chamber and the smaller aqueous chamber aqueous chamber is present between lens and the cornea it is filled with clear watery fluid called aqueous humor it supplies oxygen and nutrients it keeps the lens moist it also removes metabolic wastes vitreous chamber is located behind the lens it is filled with jelly like vitreous humor composed of water and salt it maintains the shape of an eyeball and protects the retina and its nerve endings on the front side the eyeball is covered by a thin membrane called cornea cornea is a bulging of sclera light enters through this membrane behind the cornea are structures called iris they are muscular the space between the two irises is called pupil the muscle of the iris controls the size of the pupil in bright light the iris contracts pupil becomes small preventing excess light to pass and in dark light the iris relaxes and the pupil is extended facilitating entry of more light into the eye Behind the pupil is a crystalline lens which provides the finer adjustment of focal length required to focus objects. Contraction and relaxation of the ciliary muscles change the shape of the lens for viewing objects at different distances. The retina which is like a screen is located on the hind part of the eyeball. the lens forms an inverted image of the object on the retina the brain analyzes the signals and processes the information so that we perceive objects as they are there are number of cells on the retina which are light sensitive and get activated upon illumination and generate electric signals photoreceptor cell rods and cones are concentrated in the retina rods contain a pigment called rhodopsin or visual purple for the formation of rhodopsin vitamin a is essential rods have the capacity to sense very dull light also but they cannot distinguish the colors All the objects in dark light appear to be in grey color due to this reason only. Cones contain a pigment called iropsin. Cones help to distinguish blue, green and red colors. 
They function better in bright light. They are present in large numbers in the part of retina which is just opposite to pupil. This small area is called yellow spot or fovea. There is a spot in the eye which does not have any sensory cells. At this point all nerves from retina converge and bundle together to leave the eyeball in the form of an optic nerve. Optic nerve attached to the retina sends the electric signals from retina to brain. Brain has a region where messages from the eye are received and analyzed. Upside down image is formed on the retina and it will be converted into an upright position. The size of the image is restored to normal. Vision becomes defective when the lens cannot adjust with the distance of the object. When the muscles controlling the crystalline lens fail to function properly, the vision becomes deformed. When the image falls in front of the retina, the defect is called myopia or short-sightedness. When the image falls behind the retina, then it is called long-sightedness. The defect can be corrected by wearing spectacles. The ears function not only as an organ of hearing but also as an organ of balance and posture. The ears are the auditory receptors. They are the organs of hearing. Each ear mainly has three parts. They are external ear or ear penna, middle ear and internal ear. The external and middle ears are air filled while the internal ear filled with fluid. The external ear or pinna leads into a canal. This canal is called external auditory canal or meatus. The canal ends at the delicate membrane like structure called eardrum or tympanum. Pinna collects the sound waves and directs them into the ear canal. Right behind the tympanum is the middle ear. This part has three bony ossicles. They are hammer shaped malus, anvil shaped incus, stirrup shaped stapes. The middle ear behind the tympanum is also called tympanic cavity. The three bones are called ear ossicles. Staples is the smallest bone in the human body. When sound vibrations impinge upon the tympanic membrane, it vibrates according to the sound. These vibrations are transferred to the other parts with the help of these bones. The flat part of the stirrups fits on the oval window, an opening leading to the inner ear. The round window connects middle and the inner ear. The inner ear is the actual part of the ear involved in hearing. The inner ear has two cavities, one the outer bony labyrinth and two the inner membranous labyrinth. The membranous labyrinth comprises cochlea, semicircular canals and the vestibule. Cochlea is the structure that transforms sound vibrations into nerve impulse. It is spiral shaped. The inner cavity is divided into two chambers separated by membranes called basilar membrane. Both cavities are filled with endolymph. The mouth of the upper chamber is known as the oval window and it is closed by the foot of the stapes. 
The mouth of the lower chamber known as the round window is closed by a membrane. The receptor cells which send sounds are located on the basilar membrane. As mentioned earlier, the middle tube converts the sound vibrations into nerve impulses. Three canals are present in the middle ear which are together called as semicircular canals. They are filled with fluid. Their arrangement is such that one is horizontal and two are vertical. The semicircular canals maintain dynamic equilibrium of the body. One end of each canal is enlarged and contains sensory cells for maintaining body equilibrium. Nerve fibers from these canals join the auditory nerve. The process of hearing involves the following steps. The eardrum or tympanum vibrates when sound waves enter the ear. The vibration is facilitated by the eutetian tube which maintains equal air pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane. The vibration of the tympanum sets the three ossicles to vibrate. The lever-like action of the first two ossicles magnifies the vibrations of the stapes. The transmission of the vibrations from stapes to the membrane of fluid-filled canals of cochlea set the canals into vibration. These vibrations move into the basilar membrane in cochlea which stimulates the hair life process of sensory cells of the organ of corti. The impulses are now transmitted to the brain through the optic nerve. Smell and taste are chemical senses whereas the other senses such as sound and light are physical senses. Both smell and taste depend on the chemical nature of the substance and its solubility in water. We can neither smell nor taste substances which are not soluble in water. The receptors which are sensitive to taste and smell are called chemoreceptors. Smell of substances detected by small patches of receptor cells present in the nose. Nose has a long narrow cavity divided into upper nasal cavity and the lower vestibular cavity. The nasal cavity is lined with mucous membrane. It has cells which secrete mucus which keep the membrane moist. The receptors which smell and taste are called chemoreceptors. These cells have hair-like processes or projections which respond to the particles dissolved in the mucus secretion of the nose. When air enters the nose, the chemicals present in the nose dissolve in the mucous membrane. These chemicals are sensed by chemoreceptors. These senses are sent to the brain by the olfactory nerve. Brain has a separate center for the analysis of the sense of smell. Smell and taste are linked together. The relationship between taste and smell can be experienced in our day-to-day -day life. We cannot eat a bad smelling food even though it is tasty. We feel that food is tasteless when we cannot smell it. Before eating unknown food, we first smell it and then we decide to accept or reject it. The tongue is the organ that has a number of receptors in the form of taste buds to perceive taste. Each taste bud has a cavity in it called the taste pore. The receptor cells are present inside the cavity of the taste bud. The number of taste hairs are present at the end of taste buds. Different taste buds perceive different tastes like salt, sweet, sour and bitter. The taste buds to perceive sweet is on the front of the tongue. 
The taste bud for salt is on the sides of the tongue. For bitter taste, they are present on the rare and for sour taste, they are present on the back and the sides of the tongue. When food enters the mouth, chemical substances which give taste to the food dissolve in the saliva. The saliva enters the cavity in the taste bud through the taste pore and baits the receptors present in the cavity. The receptor cells generate a small electric potential. Nerve cells given off by these receptors carry this information to the brain. Skin is the largest sense organ in the human body. It is tough, flexible and water resistant. It protects the body from damage and invasion of harmful organisms. It also helps in maintenance of body temperature at a constant level. Mammalian skin is composed of two primary layers. The epidermis which provides waterproofing and serves as a barrier to infection and the dermis which serves as a location for the appendages of skin. Epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin. It forms the waterproof protective wrap over the body surface and is made up of stratified squamous epithelium. The epidermis contains no blood vessels. The cells of the epidermis contain a protein called carotin. Dead cells are constantly peeled off. Color of the skin is determined by a pigment called melanin. Greater the amount of pigment, darker the skin. People not having the pigment are white in color and are called albinos. Melanin protects the body from UV rays. The dermis is the layer of skin beneath the epidermis that consists of connective tissue and cushions the body from stress and strain. The dermis is tightly connected to the epidermis by a basement membrane. It contains the hair follicles, sweat glands and sebaceous glands. The blood vessels in the dermis provide nourishment and waste removal from its own cells as well as for the cells of the epidermis. Skin is sensitive to touch, temperature and pressure. Receptors present in the skin are called the cutaneous receptors. The receptors present in the skin are pecinium corpuscles for strong pressure and vibrations. Mesnes corpuscles respond to touch. Ruffini corpuscles respond to heat. And the root hair plexus respond to touch. And finally, the crosses corpuscles respond to cold. Touch receptors are also called tactile receptors and there are different types of tactile receptors. Some of them occur in groups in the dermis. They exist in large numbers in the fingertips and lips. Another type of tactile receptor are present near the hair follicles. They are stimulated by touching the hairs on the skin. Some tactile receptors have an interesting property. They respond to the stimulus when it is applied. If the same stimulus is applied continuously, they stop responding to the stimulus. This property is called adaptation. This is the reason why we do not feel the clothes after wearing them even though they constantly touch our body. There are separate receptors in the skin for heat and cold. They are distributed evenly all over the skin. Each of them sends changes in the skin temperature. The cold receptors are sensitive to changes in temperatures from 10 degrees to 35 degrees Celsius. 
the cold receptors behave like heat receptors receptors for pressure are called pacinian corpuscles their structure resembles that of an onion bulb there are layers of connective tissue around a nerve fiber these receptors are stimulated by deformation caused by pressure in addition to these there are free nerve endings in the skin and they are situated just below the surface of the skin they are also sensitive to touch and temperature there are also receptors which respond to damaging stimuli pain is a sensation caused by touch temperature chemicals and pressure receptors for these stimuli are called nociceptors sensations from cutaneous receptors reach brain via spinal cord the intensity of feeling a stimulus will be much higher where the skin especially the epidermis is thin and lower and region where the skin is thick for example we can walk barefoot on a road during summer as the epidermis in the sole of the foot is very thick however we will immediately feel the heat if the body touches the ground in body parts such as fingertips the tactile receptors are in large numbers they are highly sensitive and because of the sensitivity we can tell the shape and texture of an object even when the eyes are closed merely by touching